from the WYLN studios in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. WYLN Evening Edition at 5.30 starts right now. Good evening. It's Thursday, January 28th, 2016. I'm Ann Gownley. It was 30 years ago today that millions watched the Space Shuttle Challenger take off at Cape Canaveral. After multiple delays, Challenger blasted off at 11.38 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on January 28th, 1986. 73 seconds into the flight, the right solid rocket booster on the shuttle began to explode. Fragments of the orbiter can be seen tumbling against a background of fire, smoke, and vaporized propellants from Challenger's external fuel tank. All seven crew members on board died as a result. Commander Dick Scolby, pilot Michael Smith, Judy Resnick, Ronald McNair, Gregory Jarvis, Ellison Onzuka, and Krista McAuliffe. NASA recalled the Challenger explosion as well as other space tragedies on a day of remembrance every January. West Pittston police arrested and charged the brother of Joseph Lombardo and a woman with, his, with hindering his arrest. 30-year-old Vincent Lombardo of West Pittston and 34-year-old Tracy Ann Franklin of Scranton were charged with one felony count each of hindering apprehension by harboring or concealing and one felony count each of hindering apprehension by providing aid. Both were arraigned before District Judge David Barella. Vincent Lombardo was released on his own recognizance. Unable to post $10,000 bail, Franklin was jailed at the Luzerne County Correctional Facility. Hazleton City Council has been accused of violating the Sunshine Law. A resident says that by not releasing a list of its planned meetings for the year, council violated the state law. President Jack Mundy says he's since forwarded a list of meetings for the year to Solicitor Donnie Karpovich. He said the list is tentative as council is not sure whether Karpovich can attend all of them. It's been a usual practice of city councils to release a list of planned meetings for the coming year as part of its reorganization meeting in December of the previous year. The state sunshine law requires elected and appointed bodies to release a list of meetings for the coming year, though those meetings may be altered as need be. Wilkes University is looking at expanding its engineering department and is planning on buying and renovating a South Main Street office building. The City Zoning Hearing Board Wednesday approved a request for a special exemption to turn the 64,000 square foot building at 116 South Main Street into another school property. Wilkes Executive Director of Facilities Charles Carey told the board the school is planning to totally remodel the building. He said it will have offices and classrooms. The building is in the middle of the block between Northampton and South Streets next to Marcus Art and Frame. The school says the move would add to the school's presence on South Main Street where it already has student housing at 10 East South Street and the public safety building and parking garage and the planned move of the Sardoni Art Gallery to the former Bartakowski Jewelers. Near a third of downtown is owned by nonprofit organizations and pay no property taxes. In a separate but related move, the board also approved the school's plans to build an addition onto the former Bartakowski property for the art gallery. A federal suit challenging Wilkesbury's one strike is still alive. Federal Judge James N. M. Munley denied the city's motion to demit, dismiss a civil suit challenging the ordinance of, as unconstitutional. Last January 2015, American Civil Liberties Union filed suit on behalf of the two tenants and three landlords. It claimed the ordinance violates due to process rights and doesn't require property owners to have actual knowledge of criminal activity to shut down the property for six months. The ordinance was championed by former Mayor Tom Layton and has been used to close down a number of properties, primarily for drug crimes. In arguing for dismissal, the city argued the suit had been filed in the wrong venue because the plaintiffs never appealed the board's decision to county court. A woman from Berwick is behind bars tonight after she stabbed a man with a steak knife. This is 54-year-old Linda Potoski, who is accused of stabbing 56-year-old Robert Longenberger in the lower abdomen. Potoski was arrested and charged with one count of aggravated assault and one count of simple assault. Potoski was sent to the Columbia County Prison Tuesday night and arraigned in front of District Justice Connect Wednesday morning. Bail was set at $50,000 straight cash which she did not post, and tonight she is still in the Columbia County Prison. 
a new poll with some surprising numbers. It shows that among Pennsylvania Democrats, Martin O'Malley has strong support, while Bernie Sanders has virtually none. In the presidential race, Hillary Clinton leads Pennsylvania with 55% support, but O'Malley, the former Maryland governor, is in second place with 28% support. And Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders brings up the rear with just 4%. The poll also shows former Congressman Joe Sestak leads the Democratic Senate race with 33% to Kathleen McGinty's 28 and Braddock Mayor John Fetterman's 11. And despite all her travels, Pennsylvania Democrats still like Kathleen Kane when she's included among choices for another term as Attorney General. She leads the pack with 31% support. Allegheny County DA Steve Zapala is a dis distant second with 18%, followed by Montgomery County Commissioner Josh Shapiro and Northampton County DA John Morganelli. The poll was a conducted among 640 registered Democrats who are considered likely voters, meaning they've voted at least once in the last two years. It was done by Harper Polling of Harrisburg. Well, it's time now for a first look at our forecast. A bright and sunny day here in northeastern Pennsylvania. But will this trend continue? Our chief meteorologist, Joe Garbacic, is in the Weather Center with the details. Joe, what can you tell us about our weekend weather? Well, overall, uh, things not shaping up to be too bad across our area. If you are traveling this evening, things looking pretty nice across northeastern and central Pennsylvania. Things not bad whatsoever. Uh, there's been a little bit of uh, some uh, light snow showers occurring, a little bit of some uh, steadier, heavier snow just out toward the north and west. And before all is said and done, we may see a couple of snow showers for tomorrow. Notice these high temperatures over the past 24 hours, a little bit chillier, only in the 30s for high temperatures. And temperatures right now? hanging in the 30s. We'll explain what we can expect as we end the work week and go into a brand new weekend coming up in just a few. And Thanks Joe. Coming up next, a look at a bill in Harrisburg aimed at reducing the size of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Plus, we'll hear from Congressman Lou Barletta on an array of topics including the Pennsylvania budget that still hasn't been passed. That and much more coming up here on WYLN. Stay tuned. You're watching WYLN News with Ann Gownley, Gary Perna, Julie Stefanovich, Paula Degnan, Chief Videographer Mike Lula, Weather with Meteorologist Joe Garbacic, and Sports with Eric DeBerardinis. We're here. We're here to fight this. We're here with board certified oncologists. We're here with access to genetic counseling clinical trials, and the most advanced treatment options. We're here with the strength of the region's leading health network. And now we're here in Hazleton, the new LVHN Cancer Center. We're here for you. My name is Ken Altenbach from Team Building US. As a company that is honest and passionate about others, the ultimate mission of Team Building US is to make you a success. Team Building US provides leadership development for people just like you and me. They offer essential training needed to build successful teams and impressive leaders. Team Building US's workshops are created and developed specifically for you or your organization. From one person to 1,000, Team Building US has the solution. The House and Senate in Pennsylvania passed a bill that would reduce the amount of state representatives in Harrisburg. WYLN's Gary Perna has more with the bill's sponsor. State Representative Jerry Knowles from Schuylkill County has sponsored a bill aimed to reducing the size of the Pennsylvania State House of Representatives. House Bill 153 would reduce the number of seats in the House from 203 to 151. The House of Representatives some time ago and it passed the House by a vote of 139 to 56 and it then went over to the Senate and yesterday it was passed out of the, uh, the Senate with a vote of 43 to 6. 
Knoll said for the bill to pass, it would have to go back before the House and the Senate again next year. The legislation of which, of which I'm the prime sponsor is House Bill 153. Originally, the bill was meant to cut the state house from 203 to 153. Uh, which would be a cut of 50 uh, legislators. It was then amended in committee to 151. And the reason that was done is that many years ago when they were laying out the districts, it was the intent of the folks that did this to go to 201 and mistakenly uh, in the early hours of the morning, they counted it up and they discovered that they were at 203, so that is where they left it. So what we did is we corrected a mistake that was made back in, I think it was 1968. After that happens, the voters of the state of Pennsylvania would decide if they want the reduction or not. They want the state house of representatives to remain at 203 or whether they would want it to be reduced to 151. That would be a decision that would be made by the people of Pennsylvania. And I think that's the most important element of this whole bill. We are basically making it possible so that they would have the right, and they should have the right, to, deserve, to determine how many state representatives there should be in Pennsylvania. The reduction of members in the state legislative would require constitutional amendment. If approved by the voters, it would not take effect until the first legislative session after the 2020 reapportionment. This would be put into place during the course of the next reapportionment. The reapportionment would, de would, de would determine exactly what the consistency of the districts, the 151 districts, would be. And then it would go into effect after that uh, reapportionment. Noel said there is a cost savings, but that's not the main reason for doing this. Well, there will be, there will be somewhat of, of a cost savings, but really we always want to save money. But just as importantly is the fact that anyone that has ever visited Harrisburg is well aware of the chaos that takes place on the floor of the House. And I think that uh, this would make it easier for members to communicate with each other. It would make it, uh, it, would make it less of a, you know, there, there, there would be fewer people. It would be easier to negotiate and to come to consensus. Currently, each House member represents approximately 62,000 constituents. Under Knowles' plan, each House member would represent about 84,500 constituents. In Tamaqua, for WYLN News, I'm Gary Perna. Thanks, Gary. Coming up next, Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbachuk is back with a full look at our forecast. Stay tuned. For over 25 years, Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, 118 Boulevard Road, Bloomsburg, has provided professionally designed skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields. All stations are handicapped accessible with resident NRA certified shooting instructors on site. There are packages available to fit anyone's budget, restaurant and catering on site. Our facility is also available for weddings, business meetings, bachelor and private parties. Call 570-384-2314. WYLN is proud to announce a huge technical upgrade to our channels that will bring a better digital picture and expanded coverage area to viewers all over northeastern and central Pennsylvania. In addition to channel 35.1 in Hazleton, you can watch a crystal clear picture in Berwick and Columbia County on channel 47.1 and in East Stroudsburg on channel 24.1. And we're proud to announce Pennsylvania's newest TV station, channel 9.1 in Williamsport, serving Lycoming, Montour, Northumberland, and Union Counties. Now more than ever, WYLN is your local network. WYLN TV 35, first in live sports. Join Marty Burns, Joe DeMelfi, and the entire WYLN sports team as we bring you the best in live local sports. WYLN TV 35, the event, not just the highlights.
Uh, kind of a quiet day across all of northeastern and central Pennsylvania today, that is, for our Thursday. Tomorrow, for our Friday, we may have to deal with uh, a couple of snow showers coming into our region, but not really expecting anything significant. How about the weekend? We'll talk about the weekend weather in just a little bit, but on to the graphic for the day. And uh, we called it calm and dry today, a little bit uh, chilly weather temperature wise but again uh, we didn't have to worry about any precipitation it was a quiet day across northeastern and central pennsylvania it continues to be quiet nothing to show you live 35 skycast doppler no snow falling whatsoever now as we head into tomorrow that's when things may change a little bit we may have to deal with a couple of uh, snow showers overspreading our area and maybe a little bit of some steadier snow as you head out towards central or western Pennsylvania. But for our area, again, we're not going to expect anything much. Just calling for some uh, snow showers or maybe a period of some light snow. But that pretty much is about it. Temperature-wise right now, our live Lehigh tire conditions, we're at 20 eight degrees and there you can see the winds coming in at about eight miles per hour 30 degrees in mount pocono 36 wilkesbury scranton international airport 34 degrees in seals grove and 34 in state college up in the wyoming valley area temperatures continuing to hold in the 30s a southerly wind averaging between five to ten miles per hour notice there was a a little bit of some uh, light snow showers coming through parts of our area upstate new york and as we head into tomorrow Skycast precipitation and clouds. Some steadier snow out toward western PA. That kind of breaks up coming toward the east. We may have to deal with a couple of snow showers around or flurries, but that pretty much is about it. Not expecting anything uh, big across our region. That's the good news. Taking a look at the temperatures tonight, dropping down uh, into the 20s. Tomorrow, we're only getting up into the 30s for daytime highs and going into tomorrow night and early Saturday morning. Notice those temperatures, some areas will be dropping down into the teens. So maybe a couple of snow showers, a few flurries around, uh, kind of cold, chilly if you will, as we go into our Friday, but then going into next week, we're gonna be looking at a milder trend in terms of temperatures. Here's a look at the extended forecast and what we can expect over the next couple of days. Going into tomorrow at the freezing point, and then at the freezing point for Saturday. Then we're up into the 40s as we go into Sunday and Monday. Maybe a couple of scattered showers around, 40s for Tuesday. Some rain around by the middle part of next week, but look at those temperatures. Upper 40s, there may be some areas that will actually be in the 50s, but then after that it gets colder. Only in the 30s by the ending part of next week. The pick two numbers, eight six, a pick three, four zero two, and a pick four, three, one, six, three. And the date time, Pennsylvania lottery numbers, your pick five, 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 seven, four, nine, and a treasure hunt number three, six, twenty three, twenty five, and twenty eight. We'll be back with more after the break. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. I'm Gary Perna. Join me and my guests from the community every Friday live at 5 p.m. as we talk about important community events and issues that are happening. Topic A will rebroadcast seven times throughout the weekend to provide you with the information that you need to know from your community. Join me here on Topic A only on WYLN. Tune in each week to WYLN TV 35 to watch the number one Hazleton-based broadcasted television talk show, The Storm, hosted by Tiffany Cloud. Candidates, politicians, community leaders, and more appear on The Storm when they want to be heard. New shows air Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and these additional air times, only on WYLN TV 35. We're your local network.
from saving taxpayers' money and the Pennsylvania government budget to talking about this year's presidential candidates, WYLN's Gary Perna caught up with Congressman Lou Barletta at our studios last week to talk about some hot topics that are many are concerned about. For two years now, Congressman Lou Barletta has been working on saving taxpayers' money by reducing the size of the federal office buildings. Barletta is now the chairman of a subcommittee on transportation and infrastructure, and during the past two years, he toured several buildings and found that there was roughly 1,500 square feet for each federal employee working in that building. Now, Barletta said workers are working in environments conducive to the amount of employees saving money. I began to realize that the leases that the taxpayers were paying was for space that was not needed. So I issued a policy that when, when the lease expires of that agency, they, they need to move out and in, move into a smaller space. Uh, and in the two years that uh, uh, the, the uh, leases expired, we've now saved the taxpayers $2.9 billion uh, without cutting any uh, any employees, hours, jobs, or, or programs just by moving federal agencies into smaller spaces. It's just a small example of the waste uh, of taxpayer dollars that, uh, that we can be saving that could be used, uh, whether it's to pay down the debt or, again, towards a budget. We also spoke with Barletta on the state of Pennsylvania's government. Barletta said coming from Washington, D.C. and seeing the gridlock there and now coming home and seeing virtually the same thing is upsetting with schools and agencies affected by the lack of the state budget. Barletta is hoping that something can be done immediately. I sent a letter to, to Governor Wolf telling him to release the federal education dollars uh, because many of the school districts uh, were going to have to borrow money uh, because the state was holding up their, their funding. Uh, the governor didn't uh, want to at the time, said he couldn't because of the budget impasse, but then later uh, decided that, that he could. But uh, you know, it's not good. It's not good for, for the people that rely on that money. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, they'll come to some agreement. Barletta also commented on this year's presidential election. You know, for, for me, who, who uh, Homeland Security and National Security is a top priority for me, knowing what I know from the briefings that, that I'm getting, uh, you know, I have to say that I'm, I'm really looking forward to a Republican president who will put national security first. I, you know, I think we're at risk. I think we're putting Americans at risk. Uh, uh, we're failing to uh, uh, secure our borders. And, 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 you know, when you see people who are killed, innocent people at a Christmas party or what you saw in Paris, uh, and, and American people that tell me that they're fearful now, uh, we don't want to see our way of life or our children's way of life changed because the federal government has failed to, to protect us. I remember my time as mayor was the reason that I did what I did uh, dealing with the immigration problem was, was because the federal government wouldn't do anything. And, and it forced me as a mayor to have to stand up. Uh, so I'm looking forward to someone who will uh, put national security at the front of the list. Ann Hazelton for WYLN News. I'm Gary Perna. Thank you, Gary. And you can hear more from Congressman Lou Barletta on this week's episode of The Storm right here on WYLN. Well, coming up next here on WYLN News, Eric DiBerardinis is in with sports. Stay tuned. off the beaten path on WYLN TV 35 and discovered a Pennsylvania you never knew existed. Hi, I'm Bill Washko. Join me for a Let's Talk Chiropractic when our guest, Rick Ryder, professional wrestler, will be on with Dr. Stacy and Dr. John. Only on WYLN TV 35. Hazelton area boys basketball over halfway there on the road to an undefeated conference record. And you can see the Cougars attempt to stretch that winning streak tomorrow live 
on WYLN. Friday night at 7.30 p.m., Hazleton will host Wyoming Valley West for the second time this season. Valley West 2-6 in league play, but outscoring opponents over the course of their last four games. The Cougars topped the Spartans in early January by a 99-66 final score, with Bobby Planudis contributing a game-high 20 points. Now, additionally, WYLN will also be broadcasting three live games next week, including the always-anticipated Crestwood vs. Hazleton girls and boys basketball showdowns on Monday and Tuesday. The PIAA has underwent plenty of change in recent months, and now the picture is becoming a bit clearer for how those changes will go into effect. Teams will play a 10-week regular season schedule in football and have one scrimmage instead of two, reducing the season from 16 weeks to 15 weeks when you factor in playoffs. For a more extensive breakdown, visit our Facebook page at WYLN Press Box. Wilkes-Barre Scranton has entered virtually every game this year as the hotter team. Not the case last night, hosting Hartford. Wolfpack enter winners of seven straight, and it's a former baby pen haunting his old team to start. That's Jason Megna burying the backhand on the shorthanded breakaway with under a minute to go in the first period. Second frame, WBS ties it up on the nifty maneuvering from Nicholas Anderson. Tied at one, entering the third. And you just can't do this. The Pens turnover results in the puck on Adam Tambellini's stick. And then the puck goes behind Matt Murray's stick. Wolfpack win 3-1 on a night. The Pens just didn't have it. You know, this team uh, just won seven games in a row. You know, they're a pretty good team. They're, they're, they're coming in here. They're excited to play us. So, um, you know, we, we have a target on this. You know, we're a good team. We've got a good record. And uh, we've got to come up ready to play. Uh, we, we weren't ready to play uh, the first period. But I don't think in the first period, you know, we just had too many turnovers coming out of D zone. We couldn't get the puck. We kept going south. We got to go north and uh, quick transition, uh, get it up to the forward's hands. But, you know, we just having trouble executing, making that first pass. Lehigh Valley also in action on Wednesday against Binghamton. Now that's how you make a hit. This one featuring physicality and a lot of offense. The Phantoms score first, but in the third, the Senators lead 3-2. However, it's Lehigh Valley that rips off four straight goals for the 6-3 victory. And your weekly Penn State transfer update. Today, wide receiver Jake Kiley announced that he will transfer away from the program and play his final season of eligibility at another school. Kylie's departure won't have much of an on-field impact as the New Hampshire native appeared in just two career games for the Nittany Lions. Kylie is the eighth Penn State player to leave this offseason that had eligibility remaining. Tonight on Late Edition Sports, girls basketball highlights from across the Wyoming Valley Conference. But next, Joe Garbacic is in with a final look at the forecast. Stay tuned. At Whitetail Preserve, they pride themselves with giving their guests five-star service. They are now open for lunch six days a week and offer limited delivery service for lunch to businesses in Cunningham, Valmont, and Humboldt Industrial Park. Call them at 570-384-2314. WYLN TV 35 has strong ties to the community as evident in its commitment to important causes like the American Cancer Society and Helpley Hand Society Telefunds. WYLN's commitment to Northeastern Pennsylvania continues with a broadcast of Hazelton's Fun Fest Parade and both the Christmas and St. Patrick's Day Parades in Wilkes-Barre. In the summer, we broadcast the Weatherly and Giants of Spare Hill Flag. And throughout the year, we provide important community services through the broadcast of town meetings, school board meetings, election night coverage, and other events. WYLN, we're your local network. We know there are thousands of people all across the country, just like us, waiting for their songs to be heard. Our mission is to hit the road, find them, and bring them into the daylight. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a blast along the way. This is the Songwriters Roadshow. Well, as we go through tomorrow, we may have to uh, deal with a couple of snow showers, maybe a little bit of some flurries across northeastern Pennsylvania. But then before all is said and done, we're going to be looking at a nice warm-up across all of our area, something I think we all can look forward to as we progress into next week. Extended forecast looking like this, only in the 30s as we go into tomorrow and as we go into Saturday and then back up into the 40s, feeling pretty good by the weekend, second part of the weekend, early next week, and maybe by Wednesday, 
We'll be looking at upper 40s, some areas in the lower 50s. All right, so scattered snow showers just in the morning. Yeah, or, or, yeah or maybe a little bit during the afternoon. Nothing that, that exciting, though. All right, well, that means that there is a possibility that game is still on. Weekend. Yeah, we'll have that game. Yeah. Yeah. Big game, though? Big game tomorrow night, and then big games next week, Hazleton versus Crestwood. All right, so make sure to tune in if you're unable to go to the game. But like we always say, head out to the game. Have a good one, everyone.